Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I hope everybody had a good time yesterday and got to all the presentations that they wanted to see and enjoyed their time at the welcome reception. Um, I know myself at that reception, I think I saw my first basketball court stadium that was utterly fantastic. I've never seen anything like that anyway. But for a school to have that, that is unbelievable. And I do have to say the students that were there last night were truly creative and I was so appreciative. I met a student from the design architecture program who created this beautiful piece of jewelry that I was able to match my outfit with today. So very, very appreciative of, I believe it's pronounced Lou, L-U-H. So if you're looking for some great jewelry, head, on, head to Lou. Um, my purpose of being here this morning though is to give recognition and acknowledgement to our sponsors. And on behalf of the Waste Board and the Conference Organizing Committee, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of our conference sponsors. As you can imagine, a conference like this has many, many expenses. And in trying to create a conference at the world level, it is a costly endeavor. In fact, we could not host this conference without the support and funding from our many sponsors. But, with the help of our generous sponsors, our waste delegates, you and guests, will be able to network, connect, and advance our learning and research. So just to give official recognition to our sponsors, first of all, the Diamond Level, the University of Cincinnati. They are the lead conference sponsor, you know, in addition to all of the staff and the leadership and the venues, they also contributed some money in, uh, as well. Um, we could not host this without the University of Cincinnati, so thank you. Also, our next level, Platinum level, Simon Fraser University, who, is, who are the exclusive sponsor for the gala dinner tomorrow. University of Waterloo, our gold sponsor, who were the exclusive sponsor for the President's Summit yesterday. So thank you to Simon Fraser University and the University of Waterloo. <laughs> At the silver level, we had a number of donations and who are also exhibitors here from the post-secondary sector. Drexel University, Merrimack College, and the Oregon, Oregon Institute of Technology. So thank you to those post-secondary institutes. We have additional donors uh, and additional promotional sponsors, Global University Systems, um, Orbis Communications, who are up here promoting their Outcome platform. Um, Outcome uh, was the sponsor for the lanyards, the t-shirts, and is an exhibitor as well. Also, Lubrizol, who are the sponsors for the coffee and tea breaks. The University of Toledo and Cincinnati Technology and Community College, or otherwise known as Cincinnati State, who were the sponsors for the Waste Board Dinner Partners. Uh, also, additional sponsor, University of Victoria, who, were, uh, who provided a donation as well to this conference. Gensler, who have the Baker's Market Bags, which I hope most of you have picked up and are available out there. And then JRA, otherwise known as Jack Rouse Associates, and Cleveland State, in which we received donations. So thank you again to all of our sponsors, and we hope that your participation and promotion here as a sponsor is mutually beneficial and successful. So again, thank you for your commitment, your generosity, and for attending our event. Thank you. Muriel, and again, thank you to all our sponsors. Uh, it's, a, it's a great benefit, and it's a great uh, gift to Waste and the global community. I'd like to, at this time, introduce Mr. Ian Slayton, Vice President of Cooperative Education and Career Education at Drexel University, who will introduce the next session. Thank you, Marty. Uh, as Marty said, I've been Vice President for Cooperative Education and Career 
Development for Drexel University, and it's uh, my pleasure to introduce uh, this morning's plenary session. Uh, just a little background on how this uh, came about. Um, for those of you that were at the International Research Symposium last year uh, in Stuttgart, we had heard from uh, Marcus Bell from SAP, who did an incredible presentation on, on how SAP um, has really kind of customized uh, their work integrated learning programs uh, based on country or school, um, and it was, it was just uh, very, very well received. Um, immediately uh, upon uh, the, the end of the session, spoke with, with Nancy Johnston and, and just said that we'd like to bring this to a larger audience uh, at the World Conference in Cincinnati next year, and here we are 15 months later. Uh, Drexel has had a, a, an outstanding relationship with SAP that goes back decades. Um, and taking a look at just uh, some of the data in the last 20 years, um, we've had over 600 students co-op with SAP in over 700 experiences, meaning that um, they were so positive that many of our students returned for second and even third co-ops. Um, so it's, it's really my pleasure to, to introduce the, the SAP. Uh, team today and, and also to provide you, in addition to the, the work that they do, provide the student perspective as well, which I think is an added bonus this year. Um, so I'd like to do, introduce June Quinn, Student Training and Rotation Lead for SAP America, Jenna O'Toole, Solution Manager for SAP and also a Drexel alumnus who had participated in, in, in the co-op program with SAP. Shakti Panir, a star intern from Temple University, and last but not least, uh, Raj Patel, a star co-op student from Drexel University. Uh, please join me in giving them a warm welcome. All right, so thank you so much, Ian. First, let me begin by thanking um, everyone for attending our keynote session. Um, and then also let me thank Waste Organization and Dr. Nancy Johnson for this incredible opportunity and invitation to talk about a, a very important topic in our organization that um, will affect all of us as employers and educators. And also a special thank you to Drexel and, and Ian for all your support. All right, so maybe I can just first begin, tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, we're gonna have a really great, engaging, uh, presentation, please feel free afterwards. We'll stay here for Q&A. And I have the full SAP team here as well. Um, again, my name is June Wynn, and I've been with SAP for about 13 years. I've held a couple different roles. I was in consulting, and then I moved to IT as a solution architect. I also did a rotation in between in our support organization. And then in 2015, I assumed this role as the program lead for the USA. Global Vocational Training Program. Um, my title is a, a, a Student Training and Rotation Program Lead. It's the STAR program. You're going to hear me flip back and forth. I'm going to explain a little bit uh, why we have the dual naming convention as well uh, throughout the presentation. All right. So let's take a look at the agenda here. First, we'll give you a brief overview. What is SAP? So um, what is it that we do? What sets us apart? Um, next, uh, we'll go right into SAP's early talent strategy. Following that, we'll dive right into the topic at hand, which is global vocational training. We'll also address, the, as I said, the dual naming convention you see. Um, we'll also share some country-specific working models, and we'll talk in detail about the U.S. model that we have, and we'll give you examples of some other models around the world, because I know this is an international conference, and I think it's really relevant for everyone um, in the audience here. Uh, <clears throat> you'll also uh, get an opportunity to hear from the students from the respective working model in the universities, and really hear about their journey and their experience with SAP and the STAR program and how they married some of their theoretics from university to SAP and vice versa. And then finally, we'll just close um, and briefly mention graduate tracking, what happens to our students when they graduate and um, some numbers that we're really proud of as well. All right, an overview of SAP. Um, can you raise your hand if you've heard of our company? Excellent! I'm always surprised because, um, <clears throat> excuse me, usually within the university circuit, 
nobody really knows what um, SAP does. And, and would you believe me if I told you that um, you probably touch an SAP system every day and you don't realize it, right? So um, let me begin by telling you that SAP is a company that is committed um, to helping every business become best run because best run businesses make the world run better. Our bigger goal, our larger goal, is to help our customers um, strengthen economies, improve society, and really safeguard the environment. Our purpose is to help the world run better and improve people's lives. But how is it that we do this? <clears throat> All right, so we do this by providing end-to-end -end software solutions for customers to run their businesses um, better. So uh, it could be enterprise uh, uh, application software to database to analytics, uh, accessible anywhere, anytime. So uh, I, I heard yesterday in the interchange that University of Cincinnati actually uses SAP maybe for HR and finance, I think. Yeah, I, I see some nods there. Excellent, yay. Um, <clears throat> And maybe your company used um, SAP Concur to book your travel. You booked your travel here. I see some nods there too. Yay! Um, <clears throat> excellent. So uh, at the end of the day, that's that's what we do is be able to uh, use our technology for uh, businesses to leverage um, analytics to make the best uh, decisions for their companies moving forward. <clears throat> All right. Some numbers that we are really proud of here. Um, you can see. Uh, we can deliver on our purpose globally uh, because SAP is a large company with over 96,000 employees in 100, over 180 countries. Um, we partner with about 18,000 um, partners and share uh, our, our expertise in 25 unique industries. Um, uh, 84 percent uh, employee engagement and one of the things I will note as well as we go into the next topic that we're really proud of um, is our 1.4 youth trained in STEM. <clears throat> so we're going to dive right into our early talent strategy. Um, <clears throat> has anybody heard of this term, early talent? I feel like it's a, maybe an SAP term too, we, we um, hone in on. Uh, but early talent, SAP defines early talent as graduates with less than two years of professional experience. So our CEO, Bill McDermott, has said that within the next 10 years, um, today's youth will really determine whether businesses win or lose the game. We know we need to equip these young talents with the best technologies and empower them and, and empower them to be bold so that we can watch them do incredible things because they really are our future. So um, when we look at this, uh, this chart here, um, <clears throat> It, uh, it tells us that by 2020, which by the way, it's next year, right? Um, by 2020, millennials are gonna make up 50% of our workforce, and then going into 2025, 75% of our workforce. Um, so knowing that, we at SAP um, feel it's very imperative that we invest in early talents now in order to attract, develop, retain um, these talents so we can drive SAP innovation vision and ensure that we have the leaders for the future. <clears throat> All right, so this uh, wonderful program and this topic at hand that we're going to talk a little bit about here, um, <clears throat> uh, global vocational training um, is the idea of us recruiting uh, students, co-ops, interns, however you want to call them, and training and developing them in our technologies, our culture, our processes, with the ultimate goal of converting our top students in SAP's organization anywhere. So if you remember what I mentioned, 180 plus countries, they can go be employed anywhere. Um, the idea of the program is to uh, serve, um, uh, which serves to meet the mid and long term strategic um, business objectives, and so once the student graduates, we try to reduce the time to ramp up and onboard to their, their full-time role and team. <clears throat> All right, so we position the benefits um, of this kind of program to the business teams by saying we provide a structured, structured guided approach to early and sustained success. 
Um, this is a busy slide, I know. Let me walk you through a little bit of our, our facts and figures. First, um, uh, let me briefly mention, so the vocational training term and where it came about was in Germany. Um, it started in 1979, this program. And by the way, this year we celebrate 40 years of vocational training in Germany. Um, as you know, and I think you, you saw yesterday when we signed the charter, DHPW is a huge partner um, with us in Germany, and my manager, Marcus Bell, actually sits on the advisory board. So um, the dual system is firmly established within the German education um, system. Uh, the main characteristics of the dual system is cooperation between the corporations and the publicly funded vocational training and or universities. There. Um, the trainees, students, as they would call them, in the dual system typically spend part of their time at the university and part of their time at um, the, the companies alternating back and forth. And um, they typically last about two, three years. So similar to what we all know why we're here for the cooperative learning. Um, <clears throat> as you can see with some facts and figures here, we have over uh, a thousand students currently enrolled in the program globally with about 1,800 rotations globally and abroad. Um, the average conversion rate um, is about 73%. So when I say uh, conversion, I mean from intern, student, co-op to full-time employee. Um, and approximately 65% of um, those graduates are still with SAP to this day. Uh, here you can see we run in 11 different countries and uh, the next slide will also share the local names and why you see the dual naming convention. The pillars of the program are the rotation, um, most importantly the dual system, so education and um, employer employment at a, a, a company, and then um, the rotation aspect, and um, of course uh, the binding, the conversion aspects of it. All right, so um, the local name. You, the reason why you see two naming conventions here um, is originally, of course, when I mentioned global vocational training came out of Germany. Uh, when we launched this program in the U.S., Newtown Square location, which is a, about 45 minutes to an hour from Philadelphia, um, this name, vocational training in the United States, wasn't going to work for us. Um, for all of those uh, who are in the United States know that Vocational training has a connotation more of a trade, a skill. Um, we didn't find it as attractive, and we, we didn't think that we could really recruit students with, with this naming convention. So um, we decided to pick the name STAR, standing for Student Training and Rotation. We felt that naming convention really depicts what the program is about. Um, as you can see here with the 11 different countries, so we run in Germany, India, China, Switzerland, Brazil, U.S., um, Dublin, Ireland, Budapest, Hungary, and then just recently we launched Japan, Australia, and Singapore as well. And so um, all of the countries pretty much focus on STEM majors, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That is where the business demand is. Other than the local, the countries in Japan, Australia, and Singapore, because their local country and their local needs are different than what others are, and they focus mainly on the sales, pre-sales side as well. Um, and then just thinking about uh, the participants that have gone through the program uh, globally since the inception, about 4,800 um, total participants um, in the program. All right, again, um, some numbers that we're really proud of. About 1,000 students currently enrolled, um, 1,850 uh, rotations uh, locally and abroad. And the students can uh, talk a little bit more about the rotations and how they happen. We'll go through our working model. These are really pillars for us. As we know, um, the students really want variety. Um, as with the co-op uh, opportunities that they get, they can go to different companies and experience that, but we build it all within our one company. And then most importantly, let me hi um, highlight as well, and going into the next slide is our trainings. Um, 24,000 training days that we have. So trainings, curriculums tailored to the students' needs and also um, uh, the future needs. So this is just uh, an example of our curriculum 
in the United States. Now, throughout the time, and you'll see when we talk about the working model, the students are typically with us for two years. Um, and throughout the time, they do get trainings in between, um, get together sessions, they have to do hackathons, presentations. Um, but what we try to do is build a holistic uh, curriculum for them because we know uh, just having technical skills is not important. We talked about that yesterday. Um, if you remember, not only in Arena's uh, keynote speech, but in our interchange, all of you that were involved in that, we highlighted how important soft skills were. Right, so I read an article in LinkedIn and it said soft skills should be called essential skills. Um, that is really, really important for us. Um, and so we select a few that we think are really relevant and would help the students. And then um, uh, we combine it also with the business knowledge. And so our program, as I mentioned, is STEM related. Um, the students should have at least maybe a major in, in uh, technology area. Uh, we teach them uh, our, our programming language and our technology. So it's not that idea that they come in, they don't have any experience, and we have to sit down and teach them how to code or such. But our technology is all proprietary, so it's important for them to, to have an understanding foundation. What I always preface um, to everyone, including the students coming in, is the curriculum and the trainings are not um, meant to make somebody an expert, right? Um, we cannot put students through an extensive training period for, for example, six months with Drexel Co-op. Uh, they, they would kill me, quite frankly. Um, it's typically two, three weeks long, and then they get placed in their respective departments for then real practical hands-on. So we have the theoretics um, from university, then we have some of the trainings when they enter to get familiar with our technology, processes, culture, and then they go into their teams with a little bit more um, uh, training as well. And uh, these delivery methods are typically in classroom. I would say for our technical training is for sure in classroom and our soft skills. Uh, it's not only just because of the topic at hand. It's when they first start, they need to be able to build a community and get to know each other a little bit better. And so that's why we like it to be all interactive and engaging. And then um, some of our uh, business uh, trainings as well as maybe e-learnings and then design thinking of courses in person. Um, so we try to mix it up a bit with their delivery methods. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about the country-specific models. I think this is really important and key. Um, here I give you an example of India. Um, India has such a different model than what we know traditionally in the U.S. right now. Um, they go to work Monday through Friday, and then we actually invite the professors into SAP office on Saturday and Sunday, and they actually deliver um, university classes to, to the students there. And so we talked about that yesterday in the interchange as like, you know, a flipped process of how we can really involve more university into um, the employer space. Uh, so again, in the US, we typically don't see this kind of model. Um, and uh, I think maybe Thailand, Nancy, you were mentioning, uh, the hospitality industry uh, has this as well. So um, this is India's model. And then, of course, uh, Germany's typical model with the cooperative learning that we know. And it, it is similar to the model we know with Drexel with the co-op. So um, they do three months at university, three months at, uh, at the SAP, and then back again, back again. Um, so uh, this is the, the, the dual system here with the partnership with the HWB. All right, so let's get into it. This is our U.S. Drexel model. And don't worry, let me walk you through this a little bit. I know it seems a little bit um, crazy. Uh, so the way that this uh, operates is we have two models in SAP uh, for the STAR program, specifically vocational training. The first model, I would say, is you know the most attractive model, of course. It's cooperative learning. It's dedicated six months full time. For us and the kind of business that we're in with technology and software, this is imperative to have a student for six months full time. Um, but we don't only just keep them six months full time, they are actually part time as well. So um, I think this really helps with them in terms of engagement, learning, 
And then quite frankly, in the US, um, you know, costs of tuition and universities are really high. And so they can use some of that uh, compensation that they get as well for living. Um, and so we do, uh, the co-op system is six months full time. They are, they come in, they get full training, get technical soft skills and business training. They go into their respective uh, teams. And then um, when they go back to university part time, they do again six months part time. They stay in that same team for one full year. Um, part time is a minimum of 10 hours a week. Uh, they can do most of it virtual. Remember, we talked about that virtual piece yesterday as well as we move into the future of work. Um, so we build that within uh, the program because our students are not right across the street. Drexel is about 45 minutes to an hour. We want to alleviate the commute time, um, but we want to be able to still provide them with a learning experience. Um, and so they do have to come in the office one day a week. The reason why is just for that engagement. So they propose their part-time working schedule um, to us. And uh, they stay in that one team. A lot of times I get challenged and I say, they say, well, June, six months, can't I just do maybe two months here, two months there, right? They want that flavor, they want that rotation. And what I try to explain is that, again, our technology is not rocket science, right? But it takes time. It takes time to learn it, to, to learn the processes. Um, and so we feel one full year is, is a good enough time. It's not gonna be, you know, uh, make them an expert uh, by no means, but they have a good solid foundation. Then they can move into their next role, um, their next rotation, which would be second year with us, third co-op for them. So Drexel is a five year, three co-op. Um, we do not pick them up on their first uh, co-op. We say, you know, get your experience somewhere else, and then second and third, we ask them to commit those two co-ops with us. And I will be completely honest with you, it was a challenge in the beginning. As you know with students, that fear of commitment came in, that, oh, I'm gonna have to retire in this job or something. Um, and uh, as we moved along and, and word of mouth came about that they can pick um, their rotations and they can get the different flavor that they want, um, it became very attractive to them. So year one, I matched them accordingly to their business teams that they'll work in. And then year two um, is such a compromise that I let them pick wherever they want to go. So some of my CS students say, you know, I realized I'm not a coder. I don't want to develop. So then they go to maybe sales or they go to a business organization and that's their choice. Again, six months full time, senior years part time. The goal is to convert them within that time frame so they immediately go into their full time role. The interesting part also and the most attractive part I think about this program is the opportunity for international rotation. So um, students are eligible to nominate themselves for year one, and um, we will select up to maybe three to five students, and they can split their six months. They can do three months, all fully funded by SAP, pick any location they want to go to, and then come back and do three months in our Newtown Square office. So in essence, someone can actually have three rotations, three different experiences, in our company in the two years. I've actually had someone organize their time really well and had four. So when they went part-time their second year, they decided to move to a different team and that team was able to support them part-time. Um, so that's model number one with the, the cooperative learning that we know. Um, and then, so what I'm gonna do is let you hear from Raj. Uh, he's currently enrolled in the program and he's going through this uh, particular model. And you'll hear about his experience. Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Raj Patel and uh, I feel very privileged to be here. Thank you to June and thank you to everyone here. I'm energized and I'm ready to roll. <laughs> so I am um, a third year at the SAP Star program. I joined SAP um, very early in 2017 and I'm currently in my third rotation. And I study business administration and data science at Drexel University. So in this presentation, I'm going to walk you through my journey at SAP so far and the symbiosis between Drexel and SAP and how they make it work for the best internship experience on the planet. So let's get to it. For our first presentation, um, I was placed in digital business services. So you can think of this as SAP's 
support and practice are. Um, SAP creates software and they sell software. So when things go wrong or there's mistakes or bugs, uh, this is the group that fixes that and makes sure that the customers are really happy. Um, so the first thing in this rotation I got to do was learn about the portfolio that SAP has, uh, spanning across multiple lines of businesses. Um, it's pretty incredible. Uh, but I got to focus on the analytics suite of tools. I got to create internal tools uh, that you know transition to externally and had a lot of impact. Small projects can have a lot of impact at SAP. I got to visit customers, uh, so I visited um, the largest pharmaceutical company in the world in Texas. I went to a manufacturing company in Delaware and a mining company in New York. Um, so that was my first rotation. For my second rotation, I worked in Leonardo Business Development. So Leonardo is the catch-all phrase for the new technologies around the block. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, all that is encapsulated within Leonardo. And this team, I got to be at the cutting edge of what SAP has to offer to customers, learn about the work blocks are that customers have, um, create a sales forecasting tool that you know predicts revenues from quarters and you know that tool was able to be transferred to different parts of SAP. Um, and also I got to learn about the ecosystem that SAP is in. Uh, more and more customers and organizations are running heterogeneous environments, not just SAP. So how do we integrate to them? How uh, how are we you know in position to compete against these customers and you know what is our value proposition? And for my third rotation, I was in CSG, the corporate strategy group. And in this group, the whole idea is to make short-term and long-term plans, the vision for what SAP stands for and where it will be in the future. But a lot of people notice that there's an industry, that there's a gap between strategy and execution. And in this you know, group, the idea is more on the execution and less on the strategy, believe it or not. And the way I did this was participating in helping develop a sales intelligence tool to help account executives, salespeople, sell intelligently using algorithms and machine learning, um, resource data from vendors, and like, algorithms on top of it to make sure that you know, we're offering customers the things that they need, not the things that they already have. And one major key takeaway that I got from this group um, was to understand the implications of decisions long term and short term, creating a vision and a plan for yourself, for your career. So how does this all work? Um, SAP and Drexel have a really close collaboration. And on SAP's end, they give us training to make us, you know, really prepared for what we do day in and day out, um, soft skills and you know technical skills. We get meaningful work, you know, we're tied to customers. Um, we always, you know, go on site or you know have customers that are really looking forward to what we have to offer to them, and um, we report to many people internally. So we feel like we're doing a lot of work that's impactful. And another thing that Drew mentioned was flexible schedule. So I'm a full-time student right now, but I work two days a week, and June makes it happen. I mean, I propose a schedule to June and she agrees. Um, there's always an open line of communication. If I have an exam one day and I say I need to study, um, she always makes it work. So it's fantastic. On um, Drexel's end, there's relevant course for practical learning. You know, we have site visits. Um, there's industry people that we invite into the classrooms to get experience um, firsthand from people that have done it in the past. And, you know, by taking SAP classes specifically in our global school of business, so that has really prepared me for what I'm doing, you know, at SAP and the co structure, of course. You know, sometimes three months is too short to really immerse yourself to what you do day in and day out. And the six-month periods, I really feel like an important team and, you know, not just a temporary intern, but, you know, having a lot of impact in what I do day in and day out. So, you know, this has been my journey so far. I'm really excited for what's to come. And thank you everyone. I'm gonna pass it on to June now. Okay, so thank you again, Raj. And you can see how well this model works. Um, Raj has been very
very creative in structuring his part time and his rotations. And you can see he majors in one thing, but he's done corporate strategy, um, machine learning, business development, so a, a wide variety of opportunities within our just one location as well. Um, this next model is our second model. And the reason why we do two models is we want to diversify a little bit. So um, this is the traditional school schedule model that we know in the United States where students typically have the summers off 10, 12 weeks um, and then back at university for the nine months. So again, not as long as the Drexel co-ops for the six months full time, but still I didn't want to miss out on talent. Um, by bypassing this model, and we found that it works. It works very well, and you'll hear from Shakti on how well it works. Uh, we partner with Temple University, St. Joe's, and we're actually starting a pilot um, in our Pittsburgh SAP location. Uh, I saw the slide yesterday um, from the Chief Innovation Officer, I think, and Pittsburgh location is now a tech hub, so we are in front of that. So we're gonna see how well it works. There's not a me there, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll manage accordingly and so we have three hires there. It's working out really well with the team. Um, but this uh, model pretty much is we try to build the same uh, aspects, right? So they will have training as, as, as the Drexel students, technical soft skills and business training. Again, a couple weeks. And then they go into their teams, their rotations. Um, it's full-time summer, part-time again, uh, minimum 10 hours a week back at university. They can work extra hours when they're on fall break, spring break, winter break, however they want. Um, and then the following year, summer, they rotate, they go to another team of their choosing. Again, senior year um, for part-time, part-time for senior year, and the goal is to convert them as a full-time employee. So. Um, Again, this model works just as well, and the caliber of the students that we find are just as great as the Drexel students, um, too. I do hire the bulk of my students, typically from the Drexel model, and then um, this model pretty much is about uh, five to seven students um, when we round it out there. Um, and then next up, we will hear from Shakti from Temple. So thank you, June, and thank you everyone for having me here today. Um, get right into it. Uh, my name is Shakti Panir, and I currently study computer science at Temple University, located in Philadelphia. And I started my journey with SAP in May of 2018, and I'm currently in my second rotation of the SAP STAR program. So let's talk about what I did during my first rotation. I was placed in the Center of Excellence back office. But what is the back office? The back office, the SAP has a different take on the back office. The back office is considered the emergency room of SAP. Since SAP has numerous clients all over the world, globally, uh, many of these clients can sometimes face business down situations, such as a database going down and millions of users being impacted. And these cases are then, uh, these business down situations are then escalated into cases and sent to the back office where they need to be de-escalated. And then here's where I come in. The back office gave me the task of tying together all the information regarding these cases and putting them together into one elegant user interface. Before this user interface, de-escalation architects, who are the workers of the back office, had to go through very disparate systems, multiple user interfaces, in order to get the information that they needed in order to begin analyzing and de-escalating the case. But with the help of my product, they were able to get the information immediately and start de-escalating the case, which contributed a lot of production to the back office. So not only was I contributing to SAP, but I want to talk about how, in the process of implementing this product, I was able to garner core technical skills and lay very serious foundations that would help me for my next, uh, my next rotation. So since I was able to implement a product into uh, SAP and make it and uh, make the lives of many de-escalation architects much easier, I was then given the wonderful opportunity to do a rotation away in Silicon Valley. I was an Android developer uh, placed in the SAP Developer Relations Team located in Palo Alto, California. As you can see, there's a picture of me with Android. And, um, 
Yeah, so basically my application called App Counter was used to help optimize the work of administrators at a convention called SAP Tech Ed. But really quickly, let me explain to you what SAP Tech Ed is. SAP Tech Ed is a convention held all over the world offering interactive tutorials and prizes to the general public in order to promote awareness of SAP technology. As a result, my application is going to be used to uh, count the number of tutorials completed as the load gets heavy. There are tens and thousands of people that come to these conventions and all this needs to be tracked and uh, something needs to be shown for it. And um, during my, and also I want to talk about the impact of this application as well. This application that uh, I'm, I'm almost done creating, it will be used all over the world. It will be used in Bangalore, Barcelona, Las Vegas, and also in many other locations for many years to come as well. So this code base that I'm writing is being put into production, and it also is theoretically touching tens of thousands of users because every time someone completes a tutorial, they need to use my application in order to uh, signify that they completed the tutorial and transfer that data over. And I also want to talk about um, an obstacle that I ran into during my rotation. I was implementing a product made by a very specific SAP team located in San Ramon, California. Luckily, since I was in the Valley, I was able to go straight to this team and get direct consultation, implementation, and solutions from them. But not only in addition to that, but I was also able to get uh, a lot of experience from them. They taught me different techniques, mechanisms, and practices that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else. And it's just so valuable. And you know, overall, from this uh, rotation away, I was able to travel to the West Coast for the first time in my life. I was able to work with some of the brightest minds in Silicon Valley and some of the newest technologies in the industry. And I was able to take away some very core and advanced software engineering techniques that I wouldn't have learned anywhere else. And with, the, with these skills, I'm then able to take them away to university. So let's talk about how SAP and university coincide together. Uh, first off, my time management skills have improved immensely because I'm away at university working at a full-time student capacity, like full credit overload. And at the same time, I'm also working at SAP at 20 hours a week. And because of this, uh, I have to time manage and make sure I contribute to SAP as well as do well in school. And as a result, it uh, improves my time management skills. And um, there are a couple results that come from this relationship between SAP and university. First off, um, since I was able to get so many foundations and a lot of uh, core skills, from my work at SAP, I was then able to ramp up easier in school and just dive very deep into the content that was happening in my classes. I was able to get the theory immediately and uh, learn more and get a greater experience out of school. But on top of that, I was then able to take this theory and all this information and dive deeper and then implement that back to SAP. Because when I'm at SAP, I need to continuously implement solutions and, um, and solve problems. And the theory and, class and knowledge I learned from university, I can then take and use them as part of my solutions. And as you can see, like the the two the two organizations, SAP and Temple, they continually contribute to each other as if it's this ecosystem. And on top of that, it's making me a better student and help me prepare better overall for my uh, full-time role and status. And. Um, on that note, I just want to talk about the SAP STAR program. It's a wonderful opportunity. I've been able to take technical roles, soft skills roles, business roles, leadership roles, and I've been able to have like a full experience and better myself in a way I never thought I ever could. And uh, yeah, um, so now that you've heard from me, a current Temple, a current STAR student, I would like you to introduce you to my colleague Jenna, who is an alumni of the STAR program. So, thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, like Shakti said, my name is Jenna O'Toole, and I'm actually a uh, graduate of the STAR program. So, I've been at SAP now since 
now for about three years, and I just graduated from Drexel University with um, a major in business and engineering about a year ago. So today I'm going to kind of talk you through my journey within SAP and specifically with the STAR program. So ultimately I decided on um, pursuing the STAR program for three main reasons when I was looking for my second co-op at Drexel University. Uh, the first one was definitely the rotational aspect of it. There weren't too many internship opportunities out there that had rotations uh, built into them and the opportunity for me to kind of learn one set of skills or have one type of experience and take that and move to a different part of the business uh, to kind of continue learning and evolving was something that I was really excited about and something that I wanted to be a part of. The second reason why I really decided to pursue the STAR program was the training aspect of it. Uh, things might be done a little bit differently now in terms of scheduling, but my entire first month was spent in just training. So we had technical trainings and soft skill trainings so that by the time I got into my specific position, I was very well prepared in order to do the job that I had come to do and to learn. Um, and then the last part that really made the difference was the international rotation. Um, when I kind of came in for my interview, June had talked to me about how not only we could rotate to a different area within the company, but we can uh, rotate to a different area in the world. And that was just something that no other internship program out there had at the time. So I was really, really all on board and wanted to, to join. But when you put these three things together, uh, SAP was really investing in me as a person, both professionally and personally, and that was just the experience that I was looking for, especially if I was going to be committing to two years of, um, two years of working here. And it was such a great experience, I'm so happy that I did it. So, to kind of get into my first rotation a little bit, I was um, a part of the Quality Assurance Group, where I was um, writing test scripts, automated test scripts, to test the software before we pushed it out to all of our internal computers. And being that I do have a little bit of a business background, it was a challenge for me at first, but because I had all the trainings and because I had this network of students and really great managers and mentors, I was able to use what I had and all the tools that were given to me in order to really excel at it. So um, I kind of, that was my first rotation. And as I was starting to transition into working part time and going back to school, I was building out my class schedule when I came across this international residency consulting class. So take, to take a step back a little bit, this is not a part of the STAR program, this is a part of Drexel University, but I would, have, would not have been able to take this class if I didn't have the experiences that I gained at SAP. So this class is very different. There's no tests, there's no exams, there's no homework, and you have to submit an application, letters of recommendation, and have an interview process. And that's all because what we're doing in this class is providing real consulting services for uh, real companies. So this company that I was uh, matched with was actually a software company, which was the reason why I was picked for this class that was based in Prague that was trying to come to the U.S. and expand their business to the U.S. So what my class and I did was we put together a monetization plan, a marketing plan, and a partnerships plan, and we took the entire turn to really work together, do all the research, come together with this presentation, and then at the end of the quarter, we got to travel to Prague, so that's my class and I, um, to meet with the company, meet with the CEO, present to him all of our findings, and it was a really amazing experience. And like I said, one that I wouldn't have had unless I had gotten real experience at a software company like SAP um, to really make a difference in this class. So after I wrapped up this class and I was ready to transition to my second rotation within SAP, um, I had been picked for an international rotation. And I, um, I knew kind of off the bat that I wanted to go to Waldorf, Germany, which is where our headquarters are located. Uh, after being at SAP for about a year, I had met so many people that were based here, worked with so many different people out of here, so I wanted to go and, and see the real, the, the real office and see how everything was like. Um, 
It was definitely such an amazing, ex amazing experience, and I was very lucky to have gone with four other STAR students. So we definitely took advantage of the fact that we were located in Central Europe, and just about every weekend we went on a different trip. So you can see us there, we went to Athens, um, that's us in Athens, and then down here at the bottom we were in Copenhagen. Um, I think we went to like, Amsterdam, Rome, <laughs> Switzerland, France, you name it, we probably went there. And it was such an absolutely amazing experience. So um, that was my second rotation. And like I said, I am now a full-time employee. Um, I'm actually a solutions manager for the industry business unit for chemicals. And basically what I do is I sit in between sales and development. So I support sales. I'm out there talking to customers every day. Uh, but at the same time, I'm listening to what they have to say and working with development to make sure that within the next five years, we have uh, solutions that our customers are going to need and that, are, that they're going to be using. Um, but within my full-time role, there are definitely some key takeaways that, I've, that I use that I learned within the STAR program while I was here. So, the first one is definitely the sense of community. Um, even though STAR students are in different areas and different places throughout the world, um, I've grown this network, and we all have kind of grown this network, so that I always have somebody somewhere that I can go to and talk to for help. Um, in addition to that, I've met some of my best friends here, and people that I like that are I really trust and really have been great mentors for me. And it's been that just sense of community was what I was looking for in a full-time role. The second aspect of it were there was a lot of uh, leadership opportunities within the STAR program. So the one that um, I had taken advantage of is as Jane was talking, we have STAR students all throughout the world. So about once a quarter, we try to come together through a video conference to kind of talk about the similarities and the differences of our programs, of our cultures, of our schools. And probably one of the coolest experiences we've had was uh, we shipped a box of snacks, American snacks, to the office in Hungary. And the Hungarian students shipped a box of Hungarian snacks to the US. And we kind of had this um, video conference call and we got to try the different types of food, talk about the differences in our culture. And it was just a really nice experience and it's very eye-opening. And then the last really big key takeaway is a lot of the career guidance that I was given. So because I was able to rotate to different areas of the company and different areas of the world, I got to see a lot of the company and I got to see what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. And I also had a lot of mentors and people looking out for me uh, that I could go to when I was trying to make that decision of where I wanted to start my full-time career. And at the end of the day, I'm so happy that I was able to, to stay here and I'm you know, excited to see where the rest of my, my career goes. So that being said, I'm going to hand it back over to June and she's going to tell you a little bit more about other graduates like me and how we do some of the tracking. our students the real world experience that's the only way that we know that they are prepared for their full-time roles whether they stay with us or they go somewhere else hoping that they stay with us um, next I'll close it out with some numbers that we're quite proud of here um, but we do track the students after they graduate we want to see how they progress in their career and you can see our retention rates throughout um, US is about 74% um, and again um, uh, all the students that were active and then all the graduates as well um, throughout the time and not having the numbers so far for Japan, Singapore, and Australia since they are new. Um, most importantly, as well as our female graduates, because we're a STEM program, uh, we know that we um, do not get that many females in the STEM major, but you can see we're quite proud of the numbers across the globe of uh, the females, the percentage that we have in our program. And uh, most importantly as well, I'll make note is um, we actually have an uh, executive board member that has gone through this program many years ago, and also one that is president of our product engineering group. All right, so, with that said, um, that concludes our presentation.
education. And again, thank you so much for sitting through this, listening to us. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions then, but we'll close it out now. Thank you. If I were to summarize my reaction to those presentations in two words, I would be blown away. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, mind blown at the, the retention rate of the STAR program, the quality of the work that SAP provides to students, and their ability to present and articulate uh, on all of that. I'm just so proud of the Drexel and, and Temple students um, and, and what they've done today. So it's even coffee and tea break if you have some questions for, for June and, and, and for our, our other presenters. Uh, but in conclusion, I just want to make sure uh, that uh, you all come up and like to present a gift to you. We'll be